Good morning, church. Sorry about that little hiccup here. Hope we're li hopefully we're live and you are seeing us on this Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, just a reminder, the order of worship was emailed to you from North Scottsdale United Methodist Church, along with the lyrics for the hymns. Uh, the reminder is there as well, so there's a lot of announcements to get you caught up to speed. As you probably know, Rebecca Rennick was uh, diagnosed with COVID, so they've been under quarantine. David will be back next week, and we'll resume the 8.30 drive-in service. Uh, reminder also that we'll be on Zoom after the service today. Last week, we had over 70 devices logged in, so it was really great to see everybody. Today's Sunday School lesson is all about the mustard seed, so grab the kiddos and open the email from Miss Terry with all the details. Uh, we do have a busy week ahead. Monday, more, Monday evening, the Bible study group starts again. Tuesday, the Family Ministries Committee and Church Council are meeting. Wednesday at 10 o'clock, the Bible study group meets. And then there's bedtime Bible stories at 6.30. Creative Christians meet at Thursday at 4. Friday morning, the men get up bright and early for the 6.30 Bible study. And then Friday night is the big gumbo party with the Kaplan family. Just a reminder, next Sunday is Mission Donation Sunday from 9.15 to noon. We're collecting coupons, books, magazines, eyeglasses, hearing aids, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including clothing this time. Then mark your calendar for February 17th for the drive-in Ash Wednesday service. At that time, you'll be able to pick up your Lent in a box and children's Easter packets. February 18th, the Brown Bag Bookies Club is meeting. And then February 21st is the UMW meeting. So as you can tell, there's a lot going on at church. Join us as we prepare to worship today. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're so glad that you have come to worship with us. We pray God's spirit will touch you in new and significant ways. We are glad to welcome back the Bell Choir with us today. We welcome Gail Yates as she presents our message. We welcome Annie Gildner as our liturgist. We ask that you remember to keep in prayer all those persons that need a special touch of our Jesus hand. Let us pray. Holy Lord God, we do ask your blessings upon those who are hurting, upon those who need your gentle touch of care. We remember Rebecca Rennick and Joe Coatsworth. We lift up Dave McBride and Rich Jensen and Andy McKelvey. We pray for Jack Collins and Donna Mariner and Cheryl Bubb and Paul Rasmussen and all those persons who are hurting, all those persons who have family needs, all those persons who are alone. Oh God, here we stand. Here we stand with a whole city gathered at our door, waiting for our Sunday celebration to end, hoping that we will notice that there is a community outside these walls, longing for healing, hope, and hope. As we rise from our knees of prayer, help us to worship and work with our eyes open, as we walk through these doors and through the doors of our own homes, remove the blinders from our hearts so that we might love and feel and even ache with our neighbors. When tomorrow comes, let worship continue to flow through our hands, testifying to your love and greatness. Amen.
God comes into the world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God embraces the wounded and broken. God knocks down the walls of division and strife. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the light of our lives. God is the one who makes all things new. Praise be to God, now and forevermore. to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name. In Christ your head you then shall know, shall feel your sins forgive, anticipate your heaven below, and own that love is love. I've had the pleasure of knowing a boy who lives here in North Scottsdale. He's now 15 years old. His name is Dylan Capshaw. Dylan was one of the 12 finalists of all the kids across the United States who was a finalist in Time Magazine's award that was for the kid of the year. After Hurricane Katrina, Dylan saw on the television all these animals wandering around lost. And so he started the Dylan Capshaw Foundation, Rescue Foundation. And he started rescuing animals himself. He even has a wallaby here in North Scottsdale that he cares for. After the pandemic, with the help of a 3D printer, Dylan made thousands of masks and face shields for frontline workers and sent them all over the United States. Dylan is a boy with passion, passion to serve. I'm so grateful to know this young man. And then I think about Tom Moore. Tom was a hundred year old World War II veteran from England who passed away this week. 2018, he fell and broke his hip and nurses came and helped him. And so he was able to get back and walk bent over with a walker. And so when the pandemic started, he thought that if he did laps around his garden, he could make some money to repay those healthcare workers who helped him. Of course, it went viral. He earned over $45 million to help all of the workers, healthcare workers in England. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. We can be called to serve serve God, serve people, serve the world in special and unique ways to ourselves. All we have to do is listening, listen to those God urgings, those things that push us and pull us to serve in special ways, to listen to God whispering, 
how to serve, whispering in our ears. May we all serve and serve well. Our scripture reading this morning is from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Jesus heals many at Simon's house. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told her, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. A preaching tour in Galilee in the morning while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, 
proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Gail Yates, and I am a certified lay servant with the United Methodist Church. Pastor David Rennick is prudently in quarantine in his home. His wife, Rebecca, as has been mentioned, tested positive for COVID-19. They recently had to have Alex tested because she too was having some problems, but joyfully, she is fine and only has a cold. We want to lift up healing prayers for Rebecca and hold their daughter, Alex, and Pastor David in prayer, as well as others while they are in quarantine. We recognize how difficult it is for Alex at less than four to understand what is happening. I want to begin by celebrating both how well in advance and completely Pastor David prepares when he announces a new sermon series. He sent to me a well thought out sermon early this past week. My minister in Seattle suggested that I could do just as they would have done in the church in Corinth. One of our readings today is 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23, and read David's letter as if it were a letter from Paul. However, Pastor David encouraged me to speak in my own voice and to share how God spoke to me in the four scriptures that are part of today's lectionary. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, let the words from my mouth be your words. Let the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. You, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Follow me, she began to serve. Follow me. Pretty much each theme of this series, outlined and prepared by Pastor David, is in the first chapter of Mark. Baptism, recruiting the first apostles, and now comes this story of exorcism, healing, and the example of Simon's mother-in-law to rise from her fever bed after being healed to serve. I want to take a few minutes briefly to refer to the reading from Isaiah in today's scripture choices because it leads to that simple action of an unnamed woman mentioned very briefly in only a few sentences. Mark begins this chapter by referring to Isaiah, the prophet. And isn't Isaiah a prophet for our time, for this time of pandemic? He is writing during the time of exile. This 40th chapter announces that the time of restoration for Zion is at hand. The Lord's attendants are urged, comfort, O oh comfort, my people. And in today's verses, we are reminded of God's power. The last verses are lyrics in a well-known song and are often read at funerals. The Lord is the everlasting God. He does not faint or grow weary. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Aren't those words we need to hear again? after a year of fear and sheltering in place, wearing masks, washing our hands, and living on Zoom or WebEx or Microsoft Teams. Before I might have the audacity to speak with you about service, I need to acknowledge and talk about what it feels like in exile. Sure, our temple hasn't been destroyed by a conquering army, And we have not been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. 
but we are in a pandemic. There is a need for comfort and healing. We may feel like we need to exercise a demon when we talk about COVID. It has been a long year. We are not meeting in church. People have died alone without their family members with them to offer comfort. Funeral services have had to be postponed or done virtually. Weddings have been held with 10 people, not hundreds. Baptisms have been just the minister and the family. We have celebrated communion in our homes. People have lost jobs, their homes, gone hungry, felt overwhelming loneliness and despair. Have we been like the people of Israel during this wilderness time? Have we looked at or worshiped idols, strayed from God's ways in our weakness and time of sadness? Throughout the exile, God had to send leaders. He even had to lead with a column of smoke. It was like herding cats to keep the people of Zion moving forward and to remind them that their faith was not held in a temple building now destroyed, just as our faith is not held in a church building either. Jesus' early ministry was not in the temple. He too went into the wilderness after his baptism for 40 days. And when he returned, how did he minister? The parables are set in homes, outside, by a fountain, on the side of the road. Follow me, Jesus said to his first apostles, as they mended their nets by the sea, not in a church. This is our time to reimagine church, just as the people of Zion and Jesus and his apostles did during their ministry. And so we return to the first chapter of Mark in these short few lines. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him, Jesus, about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. In some translations, it says she prepared a meal. And isn't that what Methodist women do? We are renowned for our potlucks. It is a traditional welcome to visitors. We prepare a meal. But the word translated serve is from the Greek, diakonia. And it is where we get our word deacon and the root idea of the diaconal minister. It means ministering, caring. In particular, it has come to mean caring for the kingdom, those outside the church walls. It has inspired Stephen ministers. It has inspired caring for the hungry, the poor, the sick, and the isolated. As Leah noted, even animals and nurses have been part of this ministry. In the covenant we wrote what the, when the pandemic began to affect us, we put caring for others first. I recently heard an interview with U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander Porter Halliburton. He was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for seven and a half years. His wife was told he was dead. She held a memorial and set a headstone and began to face life as a single mother of an infant daughter born just five days before her husband's deployment. Marty also participated in the interview. The lieutenant commander spoke about how he survived. He said it came down to choices and to attitude. His first choice was to live, to eject from his plane as it plummeted to the ground. Death might have been easier than the certain capture, prison, and equally certain torture he faced. He chose to survive with the hope of his wife and baby daughter. He said that after he was captured, he built an armor of hate toward his captors to protect himself. He chose each day to not dwell on the torture, pain, and isolation. He chose to grow mentally, spiritually, and physically. 
These men were all placed in isolation, not allowed to speak or see each other, and brutally tortured. Yet during this time, they communicated by a secret code of quiet, soft knocks. They memorized the other prisoners' names, ranks, and hometowns. Each time they moved, they added new names. Ultimately, it was how Marty was to learn that her husband was not dead and had survived his plane crash. She and other wives and children became passionate advocates for their spouses and brothers as they were held prisoners of war. They asked the U.S. population to put aside their mixed feelings about the war and to focus on those prisoners. Many of us had bracelets with a prisoner of war name on them. Women served providing comfort and healing to others. During this time, the lieutenant commander taught himself German with the help of his fellow prisoners. Imagine doing that in quiet, soft knocks. Others learned Spanish, French, even Russian. He made lifelong friends with people he never met. One described himself as looking at, like John Wayne and turned out to be quite short and bald. He never met them until their freedom. He persevered through his choices and his attitude. When he was freed, his last choice was to forgive his captors. As he left the Hanoi Hilton, as his prisoner had euphemistically been called, he stopped, turned around, and said, I forgive you. He said his armor of hatred fell away, and he was freed not from one jail, but from two. Both he and his wife have subsequently traveled to Vietnam. His wife has taught English there. So we come today to our call, our choices, our attitude, even in the midst of a pandemic, to follow Jesus and to serve. This call to serve, to share the gifts of the Spirit, is so important. It is detailed in numerous places in the New Testament alone, in Ephesians, Romans, and Corinthians. I introduced myself initially as a certified lay servant. It is a series of courses you take, and I encourage you to consider looking into it. I was able to renew my standing online via Zoom and with the Oregon-Idaho Conference. It was a great experience, but it is not something we need to serve. We are called by the Spirit. How might we serve? In Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 12, Romans 12, verses 6 through 8, and 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 21, and 27 through 31, are a list of spiritual gifts that guide us to serve. And here are the majority of them. Teaching, witness, evangelism, serving, helping, interpretation, speaking in tongues, leadership, wisdom, understanding, pastoring, shepherding, giving, preaching, prophecy, miracles, discerning true and false spirits, encouragement, exhortation, knowledge, kindness, compassion, healing, faith, administration, and apostleship. These are different from talents like music or accounting or the law. Each talent may be used in conjunction with the gifts of the Spirit. It has been harder, at least initially, to serve during the pandemic. Halley Center is closed to volunteers. The stand down was canceled. Yet we were able to continue Christmas Angels, and to serve foster children and their families by helping them meet needs they had. Choir has been almost impossible, and yet we had a wonderful video library of performances. We have individuals performing the hymns, and today we had a live bell choir. During this time, we have had to make choices and adjust our attitude. 
the Wednesday Bible Study Group had finished a series that asked us to reach out in kindness to one person a day. Suddenly, we were unable to see people. So we called those who were homebound, sick, had suffered a loss, sent cards and notes. I know I personally called everyone in my cell phone contacts list. And I had a few call me, a high school friend who, to my surprise, is now a Baptist minister, a former Thunderbird student who has called me repeatedly from China. I realized during all these calls, my childhood babysitter, now in a senior housing facility at Notre Dame, a friend's mother in Florida, and church members in senior housing, that I was not alone. And I know those church members I called better than, frankly, I ever knew them through meeting them at church because we've had long conversations. I was virtually surrounded by people I could serve. There are 20 households in my church in Seattle who are in senior housing. I call some one of them uh, at least four a week. I send cards for their birthdays, anniversaries. I mailed 40 cards for Valentine's Day. And some just say, hello, I'm thinking about you. I just sent one woman biscotti because somehow in our last call, that's what we talked about. She won't remember it when I call next week, but they will give her joy in the moment. I pledge and I give to two churches. I decided to use my stimulus check to support local nonprofits and small businesses that I wanted to see survive. And by pledging and giving, don't we prophesy? Don't we create the future tomorrow? When we give to UMCOR, we show compassion for those who have lost everything to fire, hurricane, or flood. Our faith, prayers, reading the Bible, joining a Bible study online, all help to show kindness and compassion to each other and all are ways to serve others. Each of us has a gift, perhaps even many gifts, given to us by the Holy Spirit. It is up to us to discern it and to serve in ways both small and large. No one asked Simon's mother-in-law to serve. She simply rose from her sickbed and did it. She had been healed by Jesus. And she didn't just serve Jesus. The Bible says she served all of them. Jesus left the group early the next morning without a word to pray and strengthen himself for his call to serve through exorcism and healing. And he moved on because he was called to serve all. As John noted in today's Corinthians reading, the Jews, the weak, the poor. John speaks of an obligation laid on him to proclaim the gospel. Our essential workers, nurses, doctors, lab techs, janitors, delivery truck drivers, pickers and packers at Amazon, each in their own way have been called to serve during this pandemic. Police, fire, EMTs, postal workers, ambulance drivers, members of the armed services and National Guard, bus drivers, contact tracers, parents, teachers, sometimes doing both, were all called to serve. I can't list them all, but we owe each of them our thanks and our gratitude, just as Mr. Moore in Britain showed. They and we have all felt fatigue. We've all had our meltdown moments. But God is with us, steadfast and strong, just as he was during the exile. Jesus asks us, follow me. And just like Samuel in the reading a few weeks ago, we say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let us thank and celebrate all who serve, great and small, if not in person, in prayer. Let us mourn the 400,000 people our country has lost. Parents, sisters, friends, famous, and those not known except to their closest friends. 
co-workers or relatives. Let us pray for those families. Let us praise our everlasting God as done in today's psalm and in Isaiah. And let us remember the words in Isaiah. Those who wait for the Lord shall run and not be weary. Here we are, Lord, members of North Scottsdale United Methodist Church, a church I am proud to have been a member for nearly 40 years. We may not be in church. We may be in our homes. But we vow to follow you. And we will serve. We will serve. We will serve Diaconia outside the walls, in our community, and through the missions in the world. We will reimagine worship to attract that community. We will serve you, our steadfast Lord. We will follow your servant, Jesus. Our spiritual gifts are dedicated to your service. Thanks be to God. Amen. thankful for Gail who has served us today for the word. We're thankful for all those persons who are serving here. We ask, oh God, that you will bless the gifts that we bring, the, bless the gifts that we have already given. May they serve your church. May they serve your people well. And may each one of us be ready to serve when we are called. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen.
as God's people, we are not only called to serve, but we are called to be served as we partake in the meal of remembrance, remembering the Christ, the one we are to follow. Spirit of God, descend upon our hearts. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink of it, remember me and be thankful. Holy Lord God, may your spirit come upon these elements of bread and cup. May your spirit come upon each one of us that we may know the living Christ better that we will listen better, that we will be more able to follow better and to serve you better. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. The bread of Christ for you, the cup of Christ for all of us. Search out all my pain. Restore my hope, remove my fear, and bring me peace again. Cleanse me, blood of Jesus. Take bitterness away. Let me forgive as one forgiven and bring me peace today. Know me, mind of Jesus, and show. Dispel the memories of guilt and bring me peace again. Fill me, joy of Jesus, anxiety shall cease. serenity be mine for Jesus brings me peace and now O people of God continue to know that love of Christ in your hearts Listen intently to the directions for serving and then go forth in the world to serve. Go with hope and love and peace and joy now and always. Amen. Amen.